everybody, it's Oops Pa Katie, and I am coming to you today with a book review! Woohoo! Yeah! Alright, so today I'm reviewing Kirk Mitchell's Sky Woman Falling. I just want you to know that I picked the book based on the title alone. <laughs> I think that is an awesome title. But anyways, I digress. So let me begin. FBI Special Agent Anna Turnipseed, a Modoc Indian from California, and a Bureau of Indian Affairs investigator Emmett Parker, a Comanche from Oklahoma, are a team sent by the feds whenever there are problems in tribal territory. Their latest assignment takes them to the Oneida lands in upstate New York where Brenda Two Kettles, an elder of the Oneida tribe, has been found dead in a cornfield, every major bone in her body shattered. She seems to have fallen from the sky like Sky Woman of the Oneida creation myth. When Anna and Emmett discover that Brenda was the center of a bitter land dispute between the Indians and white settlers who have lived on the land for many generations, they are sure she was murdered. Their investigation takes them to the edge of a simmering cauldron, flag-waving whites are picketing the Turning Stone Casino and other Oneida-owned businesses, Indians are cruising with guns in their cars, added to... just wait... The dangers of race war is the presence of an all-the-money-grubbing interest drawn to a lucrative casino. As their pool of suspects of all colors grows, Anna and Emmett's own lives depend on Anna's instincts and her ability to see the line where myth and reality come together. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, and to add to the the authenticity of the story, um, well, I'll just let you know that the author has some experience in law enforcement. So it says here that Kirk Mitchell served as a deputy sheriff um, in on an Indian reservation, um, it names that the Indian reservation, um, that in Southern California, and that he was also a SWAT sergeant in Southern California. So uh, that, that experience, that job experience um, definitely um, helps uh, with the authenticity of, uh, of the book. You you feel like the these investigations and these characters are that they're they're very real and their jobs and their the things that they're asking and the things that happen and the the processes that they go through seem very real, you know, or as real as it can be to someone who doesn't know the first thing about, you know, special agent investigations and murders. Yeah. All right, folks. So, um of what am I going to tell you about the book? Uh, there are things that you need to know. First off, it is uh, 31 chapters long, 342 pages. Um, the, it has uh, it covers all kinds of interesting uh, political, social uh, themes and uh, issues and problems. Uh, so in terms of um, it doesn't whitewash any of these political ideas or social issues. It brings them up in a in a very thoughtful kind of way amongst these characters, and and uh, you can see that uh, that nothing is cut and dry, nothing is is simple, and uh, and there and he doesn't play on stereotypes. So that's really, really good, I think. The, uh, the other, there's another interesting thing about the book is that it definitely has um, a spiritual element to it. So the one investigator, um, she has, she's, has a certain amount of intuition and without giving anything away, um, she recognize she doesn't quite at first recognize the power of that intuition um it, it's used more like foreshadowing it it, it kind of gives you an idea of what is to come but you don't know if that's what's going to happen or not um so uh what i can tell you is that the first 10 chapters are uh, slow but interesting and um then there are a few chapters that are just absolutely heart 
pumping chapters. And then there's a, like a little, it slows down again and you kind of catch your breath for several chapters. And then you have another few heart pumping chapters all over again. And then things slow down a little and you catch your breath and uh, and then the story gets to it gets to the part where you start to figure out or they start to reveal the author starts to reveal who the um, murderer is and and why the murders or or how the murder murders murder uh, has taken place and uh, so and that's pretty interesting um, it's a little Hollywood ish um, and so up until that part, so three quarters of the book is really good, very real, very authentic. Um, I definitely can see it happening, definitely very believable. And then when the murderer starts to get revealed, I feel like that's when the book turns to kind of more like a, like I'm reading the script for a Hollywood movie, um, blockbuster. It's good. It's good. It's just that it loses a little authenticity. It loses a little uh, reality or a little believability. But it still keeps me captivated. Once that happens, once he, the the murder starts to become revealed, the next several chapters, it just I just read page after page after page, and I could hardly put the book down uh, because I I wanted to get to the end. And so that takes us to chapter thirty. Um, and I wish the book had ended on chapter 30 um, because I feel that that was a great ending the way the way that that it was finished the way that the murderer was revealed and the circumstances of in in the circumstances in which uh, the murderer was revealed and and the end result I felt that that was very believable in a way and uh, and I felt that Oh, that's the end. Now, lots of books have what they call an epilogue. So when the, you've come to the last chapter and then they, then there's this two or three pages afterwards, which are like, you know, six months later or six years later. And this is what's happened to some of the characters or something like this. Well, chapter 31 reads much more like an epilogue than the end of the story. And it's, it's, a, it's what's taking place three months later. And it's about um, the personal the personal interactions between the two agents and throughout the book there's this like little romantic element it's it's very it's very subtle it's it's uh, it doesn't overwhelm the book it just pops up here and there um, they had previously had a relationship um, which they reveal in the beginning pages uh, they previously had a relationship and it and it fizzled out and the last chapter um, is kind of the you don't know whether they're going to get back together or not. And so the last chapter is kind of the conclusion of that little personal element that is just lightly threaded throughout the entire book. It's never, ever a major factor in the book. It's just lightly threaded through. And so for it to be, to take up a couple, a, a chapter at the end of the book seems one, ridiculous, totally unnecessary. And the ending is absolute and total fantasy. It, it's so bizarre. It totally, totally does not go with the book at all. It doesn't, it doesn't mesh at all with the beginning of the book or the characters themselves. Um, the behavior of the two characters at the end is in, in part for one is to would be totally out of character for that person. And so I, I feel like that chapter 31 was like, like it was like, it was like an idiot mistake. Like what was the author thinking? All right, that's it. That's enough said. That is my book review of Sky Woman Falling. I suggest that you pick it up and read it someday because I think you're really going to enjoy it. And uh, just skip that last chapter altogether. Okay? Alrighty. I'll chat with you guys later. Bye.